Everybody praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for a day of celebration, a day of jubilation, a day of joy, a day of expressing our gratitude unto the Lord Almighty. Fifty years have come and gone, and it's a new start, a new platform to rise higher and to go beyond everything we have ever done. And we come with a new heart, a new devotion, a new consecration, a new demonstration of deep, deep and love for Christ in Jesus' name. We appreciate everyone in this service, everyone connected online, everyone in every congregation all over the world. It's a day of celebration and the children and the youth and the young adults and the young professionals and the fathers and the mothers and the families. Everyone who express our joy unto the Lord and between one another. Turn to the person by your side and say happy anniversary. Father, in Jesus' name, we come and we stand at this point, looking back, then standing here at the present time and looking forward to where you are calling your church. We are asking, O oh Lord, that more than the strength of the past, the vision of the past, and more than the energy achievement of the past, you grant to every one of us to move forward in Jesus' name. <laughs> new commitment, new consecration, and new devotion unto the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength, with all the dedication you demand from us in Jesus' name. Speak your word to our hearts and let our hearts accept, believe, and run with the word you're giving us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. I can sit down. There are three things we're looking at. Marching forward. Then fresh vision. And then the future destiny. Bring everything together. Marching forward for fresh vision into the future destiny. As we look at the books of the Bible, there is no, not any other one fit for a day like this. As we think about what he did in the past, as we think about the commitment, the consecration we need to have for the present time. And, and we set our goal. We set our gaze. We set our vision. We set our focus on the future that is coming ahead. Marching forward with fresh vision into the future destiny. We're looking at Joshua chapter 1, and I'm reading from verse 3. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, the past I said it to Moses, the present 
I'm talking to Joshua, and the future, your feet shall tread on that. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Look at verse 6 there. In verse 6, be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, Only be thou strong. No other challenge. Only be thou strong. No other power can defeat you. Put, put your back to the wall. Just this. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do. All that the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you, turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest observe to do what to go, whithersoever thou goest, you may prosper. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, this book of the law. For Moses, sorry for Joshua, all he had was this book of the law. From Genesis to Exodus to Leviticus to Numbers to determine that's all he had. We, we now have all the 66 books of the Bible. And we read it this way now. This book of the Lord that he has given us this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Turn on to the New Testament in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Reading there from verse 57. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory, like he gave the people of old, the militant army that possessed the land of Canaan, he said, I was of them, and they possess, I gave them the victory, and here is the new generation of new covenant, New Testament people, and he says, there is still this God that we're thanking, that giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 58, it says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Your labor will not be in vain. Your consecration will not be in vain. Your devotion to the calling of God and the commission of Christ will not be in vain. Amen. As we look at the introduction and we look at the calling and the call of Joshua 
and the leaders and the elders and the people of Israel look at this number one the command to march forward the, the call and the command to march forward you know they could have just sat down there telling stories and rejoicing because of all that happened tell me what happened we ate manna tell me what happened we drank water out of the rock tell me what happened we passed through the red sea uh -uh. enough of storytelling enough of just sitting back because of what happened in the past number one is the command to march forward that's why he says in verse 2 chapter 1 it says moses my servant is dead now therefore arise go over this jordan thou and all these people unto the land which i do give to them even to the children of Israel, number one, the command to march for number two is the commission to march forward. The commission the Lord gave to them, the commission the Lord is giving to us. It tells us in verse three there, it says, Every place the soul of your foot shall tread upon that have I given unto you as I said unto Moses look at verse 4 in verse 4 from the wilderness and this Lebanon even unto the great river the river Euphrates all the land of the Hittites and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your course verse 5 there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as I was with Moses so I will be with thee I will not fail thee nor forsake thee number three is the courage the courage to march forward you'll hear stories about those anarchies about those giants you'll hear stories of how they deal even with themselves and with strangers and when you come in of this gospel and with this truth that is strange to them eh, they might you know say how about that but you understand that the courage we need and the courage they needed that made them marching forward we still have to have that courage today without the courage you'll be beaten back without the courage they will pin you down there without the courage you'll be looking for shelter but number three the lord told them the courage to march forward Look at verse 6 there. In verse 6, it tells us, it says, Be strong and of a good courage, for unto these people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Verse 7, in verse 7, only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you to not from me to the right hand or to the left. But you need courage for that, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest now i have number four the compass for marching forward what compass do we have and who tells the way what needle points to the direction that we need to go the compass for marching forward look at verse 8 this book of the Lord this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night you meditate on the word 
the word he has given us for the great commission. Meditate on the word, the word that produces faith in our hearts. Meditate on the word, the word that spells out again our duty and our responsibility. Meditate on that word and it says that thou mayest be able to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success. Look at number five, the commitment to marching forward. That the people, when they heard, they said, there is just one thing to do. When they heard, they said, there's no other way to go, there's no other ambition, there's no other aspiration, just one thing to do. And it is the commitment to marching for. We're looking at verse 10. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying in verse 11, pass through the host and command the people saying prepare your victuals food for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. It tells us in verse 16, in verse 16, and they answered Joshua saying, all that thou commandest us, we will do. And whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. Now, the confirmation of marching for confirmation. They promised, they consecrated, they gave their words now, the confirmation of marching for in Joshua chapter 1, verse 17, according as we hearkened unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee, only the Lord thy God. God be with thee as he was with Moses. Number seven, in the council to march forward. Joshua sent two spies to the land of Canaan, Jericho. And they discovered that the hearts of the people melted because of the children of Israel. And he came back, look at verse 24 of chapter, chapter, chapter 2, reading from verse 23. It says in verse 23, it says, So the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua, the son of Nun and told him all things that befell them. Look at verse 24. In verse 24, and they said unto Joshua, Truly, the Lord has delivered into our hands all the land. For even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. What were they saying? They said, Joshua, it's not like at the time of old. Now we can move on. We will move on. The signs of the times, what we discovered in the land, and the utterance and the, and the statements from Rehab that we saw there, everything we saw, everything we heard, tells us there is no other direction to go but to go forward, to move forward, to march forward. And that's what the Lord is telling us. That's what the Lord is emphasizing to us. That the counsel we have, the counsel to march forward. Looking at all the things we've heard even today, 
what the Lord has done, the glory of his name, the power of his name, the grace that's available. And even now we have, you know, jumped hurdles, overcome difficulties, and we have moved on to this point. The only counsel we have is the counsel to march forward. We're dividing the message to three parts. Number one, the forward march with fresh focus. The forward march with fresh focus. Number two, there are fortified militancy with fervent faith. Number three, uh, the final mandate for future fruitfulness. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the forward march with fresh focus. Uh, already we've read uh, chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Look at chapter 5, chapter 5, verse 13. In chapter 5, verse 13, and it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? Look at verse 14. In verse 14, and he said, Nay, but as the captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? Joshua then fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him what saith my lord unto his servant look at verse 15 verse 15 and the captain of the lord's host said unto joshua loose thy shoe from off thy foot for the place whereon Thou stand, standest is holy ground, and Joshua did so. Joshua did not ask, What the connection between me standing here and going to the battlefield? What's the, what's the connection between losing the shoe in my feet? What the victory is not the importance of the commandment. It's not how deep, how high, how great, how exhausting, how demanding is the commandment. It's the faithfulness to obey that it says, do what you can do and do that little thing and remove your shoe from off your feet and you don't argue and you don't criticize and you don't say, we're talking of something so great. We want to march into the land and you're talking of this, a simple thing. No, it is when you have that mind that heart, that spirit of obedience to that almost insignificant commandment and you obey that makes us to know when the significant commandment comes you'll be obedient and you don't say it's a little thing i can you know jettison that and you know rubbish that that one does not matter obedience to little things will guarantee that when a greater thing comes you will be able to obey and the life of the soldier the life of joshua and the life of anyone involved in the battle of the lord the life of the obedience of faith. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, we're looking at the commission to serve and march forward. Number two, we're looking at the consecration for sanctification to move forward. Number three, we're looking at the circumcision with submission in matchless faith. Number one, number one is the commission to serve and march forward. Already we read from Joshua chapter 1 verses 1 to 5, the commission that Joshua had. And anyone that is in Christ, 
justified like Joshua. If you are justified, if you are born again, if you are regenerated, if the new life has come to you through the cross of Calvary and you are justified by Christ and you are justified in the sight of the Lord as he commanded Joshua. And as he gave Joshua that commission, that same commission he gives unto you. And if you are born again, if you are justified, if you are born again, if you are a true believer, there is just one to do, one thing to do. You obey the word of the Lord. Look at Luke chapter 1. We're reading from verse 74. It says in Luke chapter 1, verse 74, it says that he would grant unto us that we've been delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear. Serving the Lord. He expects us, your child of God, you're born again, you're walking in the path that leads to glory. He wants you, he commands you, he calls you that you will serve him without fear. Fear of man. Without fear, fear of failure. He wants us to serve him without filthiness. He wants us to serve him without fretfulness. He wants us to serve him without faithlessness. He calls us and he tells us, here is my commission for you. Here is my commandment for you. And there is the reason you are justified. Here is the reason you are saved. Here is the reason you are born again. Here is the reason I helped you and I kept you all these years. I now give you the commission that you will serve him and you will march for. Look at verse 75. In holiness and righteousness before him. Not righteousness before man. Even hypocrites can look righteous before man. Not righteousness before our, you know, the people we're familiar with and have accepted that that's a way of life. We can look holy and righteous in the sight of the people that were familiar with, they're familiar with us. No, it says that we were serving without fear in holiness and righteousness before him how many days of our lives tell me out aloud all the days of our lives look at the commission in mark chapter 16 and i'm reading from verse 15 he said unto them and he's still saying unto us it says go ye it all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That is the commission. And that is what he wants us to serve with, the might to evangelize and the might to reach forth to the people, those who have not heard. And he wants us to do that and focus on that and concentrate on that going into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. In verse 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned in verse 17 and this sign shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils they shall speak with new tongues verse 18 and it said they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly sin it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover verse 19 it says so then after the lord had spoken unto them he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of god he had finished his assignment and he said it is finished he has made 
the final sacrifice, the full sacrifice, the sacrifice that will bring sinners out of the world in every generation and bring them into the kingdom of God. And because of that, he's done his part, so he sat down at the right hand of God. Uh, we cannot sit down, we have not finished. Fifty years has not uh, bring to an end uh, everything he wants us to do. There's so many sinners, millions and billions of them, uh, and we still need to reach out to them. Look at verse 20. In verse 20 it says, And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them, uh, and confirming the word or signs following. And somebody gives a global amen. <laughs> uh, look at number two here. Number two, we're looking at the consecration for sanctification to move further. The sanctification that needs to come into our lives so that we can move forward. Look at Joshua, when Joshua, when Joshua, Joshua chapter 3, and we're looking at verse 5. Joshua chapter 3, and we're looking at verse 5. He tells us in Joshua chapter 3, verse 5, and Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. The consecration for sanctification. If the Lord ultimately who sanctifies, he sanctifies the heart, he purges the heart, he purifies the heart, he sanctifies us so that our heart can be one with him. His heart can be one with our heart. And then the same thing the Father had given Jesus to do, we're able to go forth taking that word to the world ahead. And so he says, don't be so much in a hurry that you're going to rush out. Look at the condition of your heart. And look at the impurity in the heart. And look at the unrighteousness in the heart. And look at the fleshly, fleshly desires of the heart. Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow. The Lord will do wonders among you. In John chapter 17, reading from verse 14. John chapter 17, verse 14. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them. Hey, don't listen to the people that say that those disciples were not saved when Jesus was alive. How would Jesus stay with a sinner, the Savior stay with a sinner one week? one month, one year, three years, three and a half years, and then they will not be forgiven. He was forgiving other people, son, that sin be forgiven thee. And then the disciples that were with him, he left them in the guilt, in the pollution, in the, in the evil sin that is causing, no, they were born again. No, he, he even said to the 70, rejoice because you your names are written in heaven. They were saved. Look at this. I've given them your word. The world has hated them because they are not of the world. If they are not of the world, they were saved. Even as I am not of the world. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, I pray now that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. Verse 16, in verse 16, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Can the Lord say that about you, that your pattern of life is not like that of the world? 
that your projects are not of the world, that the way you comport yourself, the way you live your life, and the way you walk every day and every time in small things and in big things, in church and out of the church, in your family and anywhere, can they not say that about you, that they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. My brothers and sisters, that is salvation confirmed. And now he prayed for their sanctification in verse 17. In verse 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. And then in verse 18, as thou has sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. He sanctifies us, so we'll have the same heart with him, the same pursuit with him, the same passion with him. Sanctify them. And then, as thou hast sent me to the world, even so, have I also sent them into the world. The consecration for sanctification so that we can move forward. Look at number three. Number three is the circumcision was submission in much less faith. Much less faith. It tells us in Joshua chapter 5. It said, Joshua to take sharp knives and circumcise the children of Israel. It said the second time. Why the second time? Because the older generation that was sanctified, they're all gone. And now the new generation that will take Jericho, that will take the land of Canaan, they had not been circumcised and there was no calling to debate. We're a new generation. We're old now. What they should have done at the age of eight days, they didn't do. And now we're 30, we're 35, we're 40. And you want to circumcise a 40-year-old man, the pain will be so much. And the hindrance, they will not be able to move no argument. The generation that hears the word of God, the generation that will not argue with the Lord, the generation that will not bring their opinion to compare with the commission of the Lord, the commandment of the Lord, that is the generation that will possess the land. And so they were circumcised. But God was not only limited or thinking of the outward fleshly circumcision. He wanted our heart. He wanted their heart. He wanted their mind. He wanted their inner man to be circumcised. Deuteronomy chapter 30, and I'm reading there from verse 6. In Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 6, the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart. Since we became born again, have you thought of what God wanted to do? The Lord your God will circumcise your heart. He wants to take away that Adamic nature. He wants to take away that depravity. He wants to take away that stony heart. He wants to take away that stiff neck. He wants to take away that stubbornness that will not allow people to love the Lord with all their heart, all their soul, and all their mind. Have you thought about this? Since we are born again, have you taken that heart to the Lord? Have you taken everything your inner man unto the Lord? If he is going to circumcise your heart, you must go to him. You must seek him. You must desire that circumcision. You must surrender to that circumcision. And the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. Wait a minute. Is circumcision of heart for us today? Turn the question around. Is loving the Lord with all our heart, is it for us today? Yes. Is it loving the Lord, is it for the younger generation? 
Is he still for the older generation? The answer is yes. Loving the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. The only way that is possible is that we take that heart to the Lord and the Lord thy God will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed. To love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. The circumcision or submission in much less faith. Number, we're going to point number two now. Point number two, we're looking at their fortified militancy with fervent faith. They are fortified militancy. You know, somebody might be militant, maybe naturally. That's his constitution, that's his way of life. But if we're going to fight in the battle of the Lord, if we're going to overcome those Canaanites, if we're going to enter in and possess a possession, the militancy we have must be fortified by the Lord and with fervent faith. And that brings us to chapter 6 of Joshua. Chapter 6 is where the sword those walls they could not dig under, they could not blow it down, they could not push it down, they had no weapon, nothing, no instrument to make those walls collapse. And the walls stood between them and their entering into the land of Canaan. What are they going to do? God gave them the strategy. And anybody could have argued, anybody could have complained, anybody could have come into pros and cons and debate. But the wonderful thing about these militant uh, children of Israel, for that age, at that time, for that dispensation, is that there was no debate, there was no argument. The Lord said so. And what the Lord had said, that is what we will do. What did he tell them? He said, you'll go around six days, once a day, but you'll say nothing. And then on the seventh day, you will go around seven times, and the priest will carry and bear the ark. And then the time comes, you must be under authority. You must not be independent. You must not be indifferent. Neither should you be defiant. On the seventh day, after you've gone around seven times, wait for Joshua to give the command. And he will give the command, and the priests will blow with their trumpets. And when you hear that, then you shout. Not before that, and as they did that by faith, by trusting in the Lord, exactly what God said will happen, happened. In our lives, when we have faith in God, implicit faith in Christ, a faith that will not argue with God, a faith that will not try to modify the watch of God, Implicit, implicit faith, total faith, complete faith in the Lord. What God said will happen in your life will happen. Amen. Give a good assuring amen. amen. You know, you know, it's a kind of amen that drives the devil far away. And in Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, and I'm reading from verse 30, it says, By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, by faith, all these walls will fall down before you. We're looking at three things here. Three things. Number one, the silence and the shout of faith in faithfulness. Have you ever thought about that? There is a silence of faith. 
Have you ever thought about the, the shout of faith? The silence of faith, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were binding them. They are going to throw them into the furnace of Nebuchadnezzar. Not a word anymore. It's a faith that is silent, will not argue, will not debate, will not fight, physical fight, will not be violent, will not do like the people of the world do, silent faith. And then there is a shouting faith. When the time comes, after you have observed the silence of faith, that the shout of faith will come. It brings down the real walls confronting the children of Israel. Number two is the stopping of the sun by the force of faith. What people say, it's impossible. And what had never been done to look at the sun and say, son, you're moving too fast and you want to search any time more time that I will conquer all these enemies of progress and then you have the faith to stand and to say son pay attention stop there and the thing stops if prayer can stop the son prayer can stop Satan prayer can stop evil spirit Prayer can stop that sickness that has gone to that last stage. And today, prayer power will stop that, that thing in your life in Jesus' name. The stopping of the sun by the force of faith. Number three is the sustainers of strength through faith beyond first call faith beyond first call uh, you know sometimes when you think about it a young man who doesn't he's not faced any battle in life he's at 40 faith at 40 let's go up we can overcome faith at 40 and now we've got 10 years more 20 years more, 30 years more, 40 years more, it becomes 80, 45 years more. It's become 85 now. The faith that goes beyond the first call that says, as I was strong at that time, so am I strong today? Give me this mountain. I pray God will give you that kind of faith in Jesus' name. Look at number one, number one, the silence and the shout of faith in faithfulness. Uh, we're looking at Amos chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 13. Amos chapter 5, verse 13. Therefore, the prudent shall keep silence in that time for it is an evil time there are times all we need is to be quiet you know sometimes if you have any burden the more you talk about it the greater the burden grows if you have a depressing situation the more you talk about your depression, the depression grows and expands. If you have any family problem, the more you go about talk, 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 talk. That's when the problems, if you have disappointments, and the only talk you have, and the only thing you say, I am disappointed, I am disappointed, I am disappointed. The more the disappointment will grow. Actually, it's our complaint that feeds our problem. The complaint is the food of the problem, of the challenge, of the depression, of the despair. The complaint is the food 
of the problem that makes it grow. Starve that problem. Even if that problem were like a lion, and you cage the lion, and you put the lion where the lion belongs, and you don't feed the lion, eventually the lion will die of starvation. That's how to treat our problem. Let the problem die of starvation. I didn't hear your amen. Let all the despair, all the depression, let it don't talk about them. Silence. It is that wisdom in being silent about those problems and those predicaments is that that will stop the problem to death. Therefore, the prudent shall keep silence in that time. For it is an evil time. And then when the time comes to shout that the prophet came to your shepherd and said, this is not your battle. You will not have to fight in this battle. Okay, if we're not going to fight, what am I going to do? Get all those singers and let them shout the song out. Praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. And as they were singing the praises of the Lord and shouting the praises of the Lord, all their enemies, all your enemies will conquer themselves. There is a time to be silent. There's a time to shout. Paul, Silas, what are you going to do? Complain? No. Fight? No. Write something in to the social media so that all those social medias, the people who are ignorant of the power of silence they begin to comment for you and they say how can a church deal with their member like that how can a church a pastor neglect their member like that chop 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 talk 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 that one doesn't solve any problem the social media people you are writing you are putting those things for they will spoil the case for you and so paul the apostle and silas it was midnight that beating them unjustly and they put their feet in stalks and all the the prison was short firm and then silas they, they you know they didn't talk all that time silence and then at midnight silas are you there yes i'm here paul how do you feel i don't don't talk about feeling let's talk about my faith what shall we do now sing. You will sing in the night. Yeah. When people have problems and they have challenges and everything you've done has not solved the problem, then praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. And as Paul and Silas were singing, the prison doors opened. Your prison doors were open. Yeah. The foundation of the prison was shaking and everyone's bands were loosed. Everyone's bands were loosed. You know why? They sank in faith. They sank in faith. The music ministry has been corrupted by the self-life, self-propagation, what we know of the music ministry is Saul had an evil spirit and he called David and David did not have to fast, just inspired, inspiring music and as he played on the harp, Saul became free from that evil spirit. Elisha, 
needed revelation. They said, the kings have come and they're going to defeat us. And he called Elisha. Elisha shows the way, revealed to us a revelation that will give us the victory. He said, get me a minstrel that can sing well. And as that minstrel started singing, the gift of prophecy was activated that is singing and now we find that Paul and Silas singing at the right time and look at all those 200 and so many people there in the prison all the chains were broken it's not the melody it's not the words the lyrics it's not the instrument instrumentation is the spirit in the singing that breaks down all those walls of the prison. And I pray you, you can sing like that too by yourself. And Paul could sing, but an apostle could sing. And then the prophet, um, the prophet Silas took, and we don't have to wait for, you know, all outsiders. If they are there, if they are singing, will break every yoke and uh, destroy all the fetters. Good. But if it will not, you yourself, you can sing. And your, sing, your singing will bring deliverance to you in Jesus' name. Time to be silent, time to shout, and time to sing. We're looking at number two here. Number two is the stopping of the sun by the force of faith in Joshua chapter 10. We're reading from verse 12. Joshua chapter 10. We're reading from verse 12. Then speak Joshua to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon. Now understand, Joshua had never done anything like that before. Ministers, leaders, preachers, if you say, why, can I, why should I do that? How can I do that? I have never done anything like that before. If you don't do anything you have never done, you will never get beyond the level you were in the past what gives us progress what manifests power what gets us to new ground is when we do and when we say and when we overcome what we had not done before joshua could have said now i'm a leader so far so good i have the urge i have the inspiration to speak to the son and to say, son, stand there, don't move. What if I say to the hearing of the people, what if it does not happen? I lose my respect. They have been looking at me as a believable, trustable leader. Now I say something and it doesn't come to pass. If you do that every time, a new thought, a new inspiration comes to you, and you don't, you will never rise above your past. What makes a minister, what makes a leader to rise above his past is that he does something in the open, beyond, and above, what he ever said before, but thank God for Joshua, he'll bear the reproach if it does not happen, because that's what we're called. It says, go forth therefore, bearing his reproach. Don't mind what people will say, how people will think about you, and all the comments and the discussion behind you. Don't worry about that. Say what 
God is inspiring you to say deal. What the Lord is inspiring you to do, you'll come to a new victory and triumph in your life in Jesus' name. And so he said, in the sight of Israel, son, stand thou still upon Gibeon and thou moon in the valley of Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, And the sun stood still. The sun obeyed him. Circumstances will obey you. Situations will obey you. Sicknesses will obey you. And any power that will try to obstruct your progress, you will speak the word of authority. They will stand at attention. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. And is not this reaching in the book of Jashub? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven of the sky and hasted not to go down about a whole day. About a whole day. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, there was no day like that before, before it or after it, that the Lord her kingdom unto the voice of a man for the Lord fought for Israel. The Lord will fight for you. Yeah. You will do exploits in Jesus' name. Look at number three here. Number three here. The sustenance of strength through faith beyond first call. We're looking at Joshua chapter 14. And I'm reading from verse 6. It says, Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal. And Caleb, the son of Jephone, the Canaanite, said unto him, Thou knowest the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. When you read the Bible, do you ever discover what God has said concerning you? Or you read the Bible as a general book for everyone, and you never can identify what God said concerning you. Among the multitudes of the children of Israel, Caleb knew what the Lord through Moses had said concerning him. Look at Jesus Christ. Everything that is written concerning me must be fulfilled. It has an end. All those apostles, they went back to the Bible. They went back and they saw the promises of God and they said, this was written concerning me. And that's what gives us the victory. If we just read like a general reader of the Bible and you do not know specifically this is written concerning me, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's written concerning me, you know, and I'm going to call on the name of the Lord and I'm going to be saved. It says, by his stripes, I am healed. It's written concerning me. And I know as I approach the Lord in the prayer of faith, that which is reaching concerning me will be fulfilled. All the promises written concerning you will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. If you don't discover any promise written concerning you, you come to church, it's just like a general worshiper. 
you read the Bible just as a general person as one of the sons of men, daughters of men nothing in particular that you know that heaven has sent for you your life will be ordinary it is when you hold on it is when you pin your faith on that and you say, though nobody on earth claims this, this is mine. Your life will shine brighter. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, it says, 40 years old was I when Moses the servant of the Lord sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land and, he, and brought him word again as it was in mine heart. He was not lost in the crowd. Look at verse 8. Verse 8, nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt but I, have you seen the personal pronouns, me and I, I and me, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. Verse 9, it says, and Moses swear on that day saying, surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine, thine inheritance and thy children's for ever because thou 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 has only followed the lord my god verse 10 in verse 10 and now behold the lord has kept me alive as he said these 45 years even since the lord spake this word unto Moses while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness and now lo I am this day first call I'm five years old in verse 11 it says as yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me as my strength was then, even so is my strength now. Amen. Amen. Brother, you are one of the people that will go, go with us to the uh, evangelistic event at the end of this month. You remember, brother, how we went together? to those other places when we were doing the African-wide crusade. And after we land, the brother says, ah, Sir, that's like uh, 20, 25 years ago. And you know, we cannot run now like we ran 25 years ago. Why, sir? We're still serving the God of Caleb. And we're still serving the God of Enoch and the God of the people of the past who went with them to every mountain top and every valley. The God of the mountain is the God of the valley. What he did at that time through us, he will still do today in Jesus' name. So, Bring up your mind and speak to your soul. My soul, are you losing strength? Are you in despair? My soul, why are you thinking and going back? Rise up. The strength will meet you as a rise up. It says, even so is my strength now, both for war, to go out and to come in. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, now therefore give me this mountain whereof the Lord spake in that day, for thou heardest, you are there, you heard, in that 
the how the Anakims were there and that the cities were great and famous. If so be, the Lord will be with me. Uh -uh, he'll be with me. I said that to myself. He will be with me. You say your own. Then I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. As the Lord said. He said he'll give me victory. He will. As the Lord said. He said I will overcome. And I will overcome. As the Lord said. Concentrate on what the Lord has said. We're looking at this now. Number three. Point number three is the final mandate for future fruitfulness. Fifty years have gone, and now we are at the threshold of a new breakthrough. You are at the threshold of a new breakthrough. And you have new sight, new vision, new focus, a new agenda. But you know, if you wake up on a new day and you are confronted because you understand Satan doesn't have any new trick. What he was before, that's what he is till now. And the weapons he used before, Satan has no new thing coming. It's still what he did yesterday, he will do today. And if you are confronted by the same old problem, old Satan, old deceiver, old hypocrisy, if you are confronted by that and you act the same way, the new day will produce the old result because you're confronting the new day with the old perspective. But if you know that this is a new day, this is a new era, this is a new commission, this is a new challenge, and you say, I know what I used to do if that came up. I knew I know the way I used to think if that came up, but now a new mind, you're quiet. And you talk to the Lord, Lord, should I respond to that? And God said, no, that's not, it's not important. You don't want to waste your breath on anything that is not going to contribute to your forward march. And the Lord gives you this final mandate for future fruitfulness. We divide into three parts. Look at number one. Number one is the movement and the mismanagement of Israel under his goodness. Number two, the message and ministry for the Israel of God. Number three, the ministers and the members of Israel in glory. We're coming to number one. Number one, we look at the movement and mismanagement of Israel under his goodness. His goodness, it was good to Israel and it's good unto us and it'll continue to be good unto you in Jesus' name. And look at all these 50 years that have come and gone. Our movement, our motion, our going on, were there times we mismanaged our opportunities? I think there should be. I think there will be times in these 50 years. But now, God has forgiven that and forgotten that. What we need to do now is not to mismanage opportunities, mismanage chances, mismanage the grace and the goodness of God and if we don't mismanage like in the past we'll make faster progress in Jesus name when I was at school we had some of my classmates that 
mismanaged the opportunity and they were told to repeat that class because they mismanaged and then in repeating that class that following year the same thing they did that made them to have to repeat and we their classmates not better than them only that we managed our resources better than them we kept on moving on and in their year of repetition they still did the same thing and they did not understand what you mismanaged in the other class that is making you to repeat you might have to repeat that three years but it's as we look at the past and we we'll say now we're going to move and move beyond and move above whatever we have ever done wrong no more mismanagement in your life in jesus name it tells us in osea chapter 8 osea chapter 8 and I'm reading from verse 3. Israel has cast off that, that sin that is good. That's mismanagement of the goodness of the Lord. The Lord gave them abundance. He gave them victory. He gave them the land. He gave them his word. He gave them his doctrine. But Israel was not always wise. And the people of God, some of us are not always wise. Look at what he did. Israel has cast off the sin that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it says, They have set up kings, but not by me. That the mismanagement of the favor and the free will that God had given them. It says they have made princes, and I knew it not, of their silver and their gold have they made them idols that they may be cut off. Look at verse 12. In verse 12, I have written to him the great things of my Lord, but they were counted as a strange thing. That's the mismanagement of the revelation of God unto them. And the Lord is speaking to us as a church after these 50 years. Look at what has helped us. And look at what has not helped us. And then concentrate on the good thing, on the great thing that has helped us so that we do not mismanage the goodness of God, the grace of God. We do not mismanage the favor of God for our lives. We're coming to number two there. Number two is the message and the ministry for the Israel of God. Israel of God. Who are the Israel of God? Galatians chapter 6 tells us in verse 15 and verse 16 that we are the Israel of God. And what's the message for us? And what's the ministry that he has given unto us? He has given us his word. And what does he want us to do? Look at James chapter 1 verse 22. In James chapter 1 verse 22, but be ye doers of the word, not hearers only. Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only. Who are the hearers only? The people that heard all those messages given by our faithful ministers and also by my humble self all those days of the Congress. And we finished the Congress yesterday. And if you still act and live with the way you acted before the Congress, you're still like that today, then you are hearers and not doers of the world. You prayed, 
you cried you consecrated you did everything to say lord there will be a new man for a new ministry and for a new move and then we're going to have a new ministry that's the prayer we prayed over there we just talked yesterday morning and we're here today if you act if you behave if you live if you talk if you act the same way you were acting before the Congress, that Congress becomes a waste in your life and in your ministry. We need to understand that with all that we have had, with the prayer we have prayed, we are to be doers of the word, but be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. You will not deceive yourself. We're looking at number three here. Number three, we're looking at the ministers and the members of Israel in glory. Israel in glory. God wanted to bring Israel to glory. And Joshua labored that the Israel of his day will come to glory and not to shame and they did and they did because we're told in joshua chapter 24 reading from verse 31 it says in verse 31 and israel served the lord all the days of joshua and all the days of the children of the elders that outlived joshua which had known all the works of the lord that he had done for Israel. They came to glory. You're welcome to glory. Because we're told in Hebrews chapter 2, reading from verse 10. Hebrews chapter 2, reading from verse 10. For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory. Many sons unto glory. That is the ministry of Jesus in our lives. Bringing many sons unto glory. You and I, let's sit down. Tell me. After you say the Lord has touched you, the Lord has saved you, tell me glorious things you can point out in your life, your behavior in your character tell me show me the things you will say this is glorious if we continue in shame continue in sin continue in degradation continue in substandard living the purpose of god the purpose of christ has not been fulfilled but it says it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Verse 11, in verse 11, for both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Second Corinthians chapter 3, we're reading from verse 18. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all with open face beholding us in a glass the glory of the Lord. Beholding the glory of the, of the Lord. We don't behold the shame, the degradation of the lost. We don't behold, we don't concentrate on the weakness of the falling. But as the people who know were part of Israel in glory, and he wants to bring up his glorious, gracious, 
life in us, it says, we behold as in a glass the glory of the Lord. We are changed into the same image from glory to glory. God bless you for that. Amen. Amen. When the primary school, I was finished the first class. The reason we went to the second class because we have a mind from glory to glory. Then to the next class, another level of glory. He wants us to think about that in the past. And that now in our lives, we're looking at this, the class where I've always been. The class of angry people. But now we see that anger does not pay. pay. Fury does not pay. Retaliation does not pay. Throwing back the stone they throw at me, I pick it up and throw that back. That does not pay. If life goes on like that, there is no salvation and there is no sanctification. There is no glory. But the glory of salvation. And we're still looking at Christ and then we have the glory of sanctification. And life is shining brighter and brighter. And we keep on looking at the glory of Christ. And then we're baptized in the Holy Ghost. And we keep on looking. Then we'll be making progress. Then we will be with the Israel of God in glory. It says we are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. The Lord confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. In Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 1. It says, if ye then be risen of Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Verse 2, set your affection on things above, not things on the earth. Verse 3, for ye are dead. It comes a time in our lives we are dead to what used to jolt us, what used to pinch us, what used to set us on edge. Uh -uh. After all these years, we're now coming over. Jericho walls already destroyed. We've crossed River Jordan. We've been circumcised. And the things that used to set you on edge is still setting you on edge. Ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Then in verse 4, it says, When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Amen. Amen. We are moving on to glory. And even if we say the past 50 years have been glorious, when we look at the march, at the drive, at the achievement, at the souls that were saved, at the churches that were planted, and we look at the progress we had made, and we compare with that or with this, and we say it's been glorious. I accept, but now we move from this level of glory to a higher level of glory. When we say, look at the healing, look at the deliverances, and look at the recreation of missing parts of the body in the bodies of the people, I accept that has been glorious. But now we're moving to the next level of glory. When we say, when I came, I didn't have this, I didn't have that, but now God has provided the land, possession, inheritance, wife, husband, children, and we're happy, we're, you know, well catered for, I accept. 
that is a level of glory. Now, the time has come. We're moving to the next level of glory. I remember the ministry, not, not just the preaching, or at, okay, this same Bagada, but old Bagada. You remember? The pulpit there, that hall there, that hall, do you remember? That hall there, that hall there. One, two, three, four. Tell me. In hall one, or there. Our singing congressional song on tonight. Grace, grace, God's grace, grace that is greater than all our sin. There was somebody in hall one, she was crying, crying, crying. That was glorious. When we sing today, we're seeing glory. We're seeing of people being converted and convicted just by the congregation singing. Let's move on to the next level of glory. Give me a good amen. amen. Or oh, uh, at the Bible study. And the choir was singing, salvation is free. And there was somebody who had not who had been coming to the Bible study for years. He wasn't born again. He was just coming and coming. The heart was hardened. And when the choir was singing, salvation is free. That man just came to himself. He broke down. He wept his heart out. That song brought him out of sin to his salvation. I thought you would say, praise the Lord. That was glory. That was glory. That song that was sung now, you love the Lord. And then you see your brother. When we sang that song, I couldn't come to preach immediately. The members of the church had the Bible. I could still see them. But in my mind, side, they broke down, they were crying, they were weeping. And because of that, they began to make restitution. It softened their hearts, it changed their lives. Where are we today? That was glory. The Lord is saying he wants us to be part of Israel in glory. Not to go back and backslide in our ministering. We minister the word in preaching and singing. And then we go from all the glorious things that happened, I could have told you. We're now moving to the next level of glory. In your life, you want more glory. Not glory for yourself, glory for the Lord. And what the Lord has done, He will improve on in our lives in Jesus' name. The time has now come for you to make sure that the whole things in the past, the things that are not glorious, they are buried and forgotten. New glory in your life. New strength in your life. New power in your life. And the beauty of holiness in your life in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in a prayer. Let's bring the glory back. Let's bring the glory back. The glory of transforming salvation from glory to glory. The glory of the joy of the Lord. You come to church and everything that happens bring joy in your life. The glory of the joy of the Lord, which is our strength from glory to glory. The glory of transparency. You're dealing with a man, a Christian, a woman, a Christian. And whatever they tell you, that is where you find that thing. 
the glory of truthfulness and the glory of transparency. Tell the Lord the glory of a sanctified life from glory to glory. No depravity, no defilement, no degradation, no drawing back. As we look unto Jesus, and we look at Jesus, and we see the power of his life, of his blood, of his grace in our lives. And we are changed from the same image to a glorious image, a shining image. I will go from glory to glory. A new level. A new heart. A new yieldedness unto God. A new height from glory to glory. Progress. progress in grace progress in his goodness progress in godliness progress in glory Move forward. Move forward. Let your light so shine before men. If you are saved, let it show in your behavior. Let it show in your character. Let it show in your response and reaction. Let it show in your obedience to the Lord. Don't be a nominal Christian. Nominal member of deeper life, nominal worker in deeper life, nominal singer in the choir. Let the glory of the grace of God show in your life and move up from glory to glory. The glory of sanctification, holiness of heart, purity of heart. Sanctification is glorious. No retaliation, no fighting back.
glorious sanctification. Come up higher. Fifty years come and gone. Begin afresh. Rise up higher. Much forward. Fresh vision into future destiny. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. That amen was greater than what I heard before. Yeah. The glory of the Lord be in your life. Yeah. The grace of God multiply in your life. Yeah. And the joy and the strength of the Lord multiply in your life, in your family, in Jesus' name. We've seen healing these 50 years that's gone. We'll see greater healing. Yeah. We'll see triumph. Yeah. We've seen overcoming power. Yeah. We've seen irresistible power that overcomes every problem and moves every mountain. We're, we're now ready to see something greater. We're seeing boldness in ministry, fearlessness in ministry. Now, we're coming to uh, another level. Those evil powers will fear us. Even our silence without saying anything at the ark of the covenant of the Lord is there quietly. All their dagons will begin to fall one by one. Our silence will work wonders. Yeah. Our shouting will work wonders. Yeah. Our singing will work wonders. Yeah. Father, we well, thank you. You have been good to us. You have been great in our midst. You have been gracious to everyone, and when we called upon you, you have always answered. We magnify your name, we praise you, we glorify you for everything you've done all these 50 years. Now, Lord, we we'll want to climb to the next level of glory in Jesus' name. Lord, we've seen a lot, but we're going to see more. Amen. Empower every minister the more. Amen. Empower every preacher, pastor the more. Amen. Empower every leader in every section the more. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we've seen the power of human management. Now we want to see the power of heavenly management. Yeah. We're asking, Lord, as we call, immediately you will answer. Yeah. Before we speak, you will move that mountain. And when we open our mouth and we talk, every mountain will move in Jesus' name. Yeah. In the Day, bring us to higher glory. In the night, bring us to greater glory. Any time, every time, live big in every heart, in every family, in every life, and in your church, in Jesus' name. 
wake us up to a new morning of glorious power. We thank you, Lord, from this day, from this month of August 2023, 50 years gone, and we're now beginning new counting. Immeasurable power. Yeah. Untold power. Yeah. Untold resources. Yeah. And Lord, we are that generation that will conquer the land, the world for you. Yeah. We we'll surrender ourselves more than ever before. Yeah. Victory now all the way through. Triumph now all the way through. Yeah. Lord, we pray the least of us will be higher than the highest in the world. Yeah. This day, confirm it for us. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah.